Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where our goal is to inspire you to become the best leader that you can be. Our guest today, she's a, she is a business change specialist and a champion sprint cyclist. The quickest way to innovate is to take lessons from one world and apply them in another. Another, I can relate to that. I love that. She was the fastest woman in Scottish sprint cycling. As a Commonwealth Game medalist, she understands what it takes to plan, train, compete, and thrive on and off the track. She's helped um, several businesses for teams as small as five up to business units of 1,500 plus. And she takes what she learns and learned in excelling in sports to help entrepreneurs and business leaders lead their teams through crisis and change. Uh, that sounds like something much needed in this world right now. Uh, Jenny, thanks for being our guest today. Thanks for having me, Derek. Looking forward to uh, chatting and hopefully your listeners will get um, some value from um, the exploration today. Well, you've got such a unique story. It's exciting. I love to, I love different. I love I love stories like yours. Give us just kind of some highlights. You tell us about where you're from and just some highlights from your background and just our listeners can get to know you for a few minutes. Sure. Uh, so a quick skim. Um, I was born and bred in Edinburgh, so it's a Scottish accent you're listening to just <laughs> now. Um, I was originally a judo player um, from a really young age, um, kind of put into that so that I could learn to defend myself um, from from a young age. And then I uh, competed from a young age um, internationally and nationally um, through till my early 20s, really, for Team Scotland and GB as part of um, their national squads. Um, fought all over the world, fought in, fought in Vegas and um, some other states in the US. And... Um, I had a year left at university and decided to take a bit of a pause on my sporting career so that I could finish my honours degree in health psychology um, with a really strong uh, mark and uh, took a bit of time away from judo, ended up kind of doing a talent transfer across into track cycling, which is um, one of the Olympic sports that you see cyclists ride on the big um, velodrome, velodrome 250 meter wooden tracks huh. um, which tend to be either super fast um, sprints or pretty super fast endurance as well with the the more skinny guys and girls um, and um, I rode at Delhi Commonwealth Games brought a medal home for Team Scotland um, I was just picked at the post for London Olympics huh. um, for Team GB and then uh, went through Glasgow Commonwealth Games and kind of between those three different cycles, I kicked off my career and my professional life through change, business improvement um, and transformation. And those those two journeys of kind of world-class track cyclist and um, change leader and transformation specialist those journeys have kind of intertwined mm. um, and I've continued to do so uh, I retired a few years ago from competing internationally but uh, I'm still a massive fan still train every day and um, the one of the books that I'm reading just now is still on um, I think it's how does it make the boat go faster, which is British Rowan's story oh. and how they've tr how they've tr transformed. So even though I was at the top of my sport, um, you know, and I, my career's finished, there's still so, so many lessons to take um, from sports in particular. And like you said, the quickest way to innovate is to take lessons um, that have have come from one world and apply it to another. Well, so that's, that's say, one of the things I do. That's great. When, thank you for sharing that. When you first, you could, you know, on the surface, 
what does being a judo champion and a and medal winning cyclist how does that translate to business? But I can see, I can see several things that will. So I want to dig in in just a minute, but I can see about efficiency and commitment and, and teamwork. And there's just all these things that make sense that they would, that they would actually, they would apply. And, and so mm-hmm. what, what gave you, I'm curious. So before you start sharing some of the principles, what interested you in that transition? Like wh- why doing what you're doing now? Um, so I, I didn't plan it. It kind of, it kind of happened accidentally. I had had a massive increase in performance between, um, Delhi Commonwealth Games and my trials for GB team for London Olympics. And the business unit that I was working in at the time, which was a pensions company based in Edinburgh in the UK, Uh, The manager, department manager that I had asked me to present how I'd improved my sporting performance. And although I did that, I presented improvement principles. I just used some of the stories from my cycling career to kind of articulate those. Mm -hmm. And um, once the presentation was finished, she asked if I felt those principles could be applied in the business I said yes and she said do you want to come out of role half your week and help me find some improvements in the business Um, and that's what I did and that was the launch of my change and transformation career Hmm. Um, what one presentation one one leader saw something um, I shared for 45 minutes it sparked a little idea um I said it was definitely an opportunity and she kind of stoked the fire on it. So, and, you know, years later, qualifications later, lots of businesses, lots of customers helped, millions of pounds saved, um, all from the catalyst of one conversation um, that came from how did you improve your cycling performance? Wow. That, very exciting. So I want to jump right into a couple questions. And since we, we've got your expertise here, talk to me about, especially right now with all the change and crisis happening. I know I can say in my own company, our team was displaced. We were going through some management changes during the same time when everyone went into quarantine and customer changes. And wow, was there crisis and change mm-hmm. I mean, at the highest level. And it just seemed to continue. And we're, we're still looking at it for worldwide in, yeah. in so many ways. And, and, and I know this is not just applied to quarantine and those things, but I can relate to it. How, how do you lead and support your team through crisis and change? Um, so I think I think it's is there's a kind of a couple of key areas I think are important to focus on. So one is about understanding um, what's going on and where are people in that journey, because some somebody who um, is fearful and maybe have some personal stuff going on. Um, on top of the business is going to need different support to somebody who um, maybe has gone through a lot more tough times and has built up some resilience and has kind of just taken it, taken it as it comes. So um, I think understanding where people are and understanding, you know, that, you know, that change curve that um, is quite commonly talked about that people go through, denial and um, anger and then depression and then they eventually grow to accept the change so Hmm. I think understanding where people are on that including yourself because um, you know I've kind of seen leaders um, when there's been announcements of redundancy or job changes and the the there's a team of people that are all flapping and all panicking and they're 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 very emotional and they're causing a lot of stress but part of the reason for that is because that is what their manager's doing huh. about themselves huh. so i think understanding where you are and um and then and then likewise where your team is so you know what to support them and when when these things are happening I know it's difficult to do, but if you're a leader, then you, you've got to remain calm and composed. And um, I guess it's just about being really open and honest and keeping the communication channels open. And sometimes there's a need, especially if 
you know, you're in a business that's um, been massively impacted, sometimes you have to take a step back and flex, or, or I think the term, a really good term to use is pivot. Huh. Um, there's lots of businesses have had to pivot, pivot their business model because if they don't, they won't survive. Um, so definitely moving forward, you know, the businesses that can remain agile and flex and pivot will be those ones that are successful in the future because, you know, 2020 has been, no one could have predicted this. Right. And it's, you know, all the balls have been thrown up in the air and some of them have been dropped. And some of them are still right. way up there. And the business owners who can flex with that and be agile and remain calm and lead their people through that journey um, will definitely be the ones that will be successful and potentially have businesses that completely take off while everyone else is kind of still trying to f muddle through because they haven't been able to take a step back and look at things differently. It's such great advice. And the leader, the leader has to be self-reflective and brutally honest and work through those things uh, on their end, if they expect the team to follow. And and another thing that stands out to me too is having authenticity. So so not selling something that's not there. But but if you have a good vision and you're painting the vision for your team, even in a pivot, and you've done that hard work, which again is on yourself, there's an opportunity for growth and to actually have a team that follows you during this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's such great advice. I'd like to go there more. Let's talk about people who are working from home right now. <laughs> you know, we have people ourselves, some in the office, some out, out for the foreseeable, unforeseeable future. How do people work from home? Those that are used to it are maybe okay, but this, a lot of people find themselves suddenly in a spot where they're distracted and it's not the maybe the ideal working conditions. What are, do you have some advice for them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm a big believer um, in... Under, understanding and knowing what your optimum working conditions are. And there's some kind of really obvious ways to find that out. So uh, what time of day is good for you? Um, and you'll know that just, you know, if you keep an eye on it over a couple of, couple of weeks and months, um, you know, if you've had plenty of life experience, you'll know whether you're better in the morning, mid-afternoon, late in the evening, you're like a night owl. So, time of day what conditions around you do you like so you hear about some students that like music and the radio in the background do you like silence um i personally like music that doesn't have like words and singing so like movie soundtrack music or something quiet that's classical um for specific tasks other times i'm quite happy just having silence um it might be the clothes that you wear, um, the room that you work in. And one, once you work out all the different environmental things that put you into an optimum state, um, it's about consistently creating those conditions. If you can, you may not be able to create it for the whole day, especially if you've got family or kids or um, dogs or cats running around in the background. <laughs> but no one's going to be productive, massively productive for seven or eight hours a day. It's just not physically possible from an energy point of view. So it's it's more about can you buy yourself th those conditions for even if it's just an hour in the morning and you do your most important task for that hour and the same in the afternoon. And there's nothing wrong with signposting, you know, to your to the people that are in the household um, this is my power hour. Shout out to Deirdre Ramsey who gave it the name yeah. a few years ago. Um, this is my power hour, 10 till 11 and 2 till 3. That's when you do your really, really most important work. And the rest of the time, um, you know, and I mean like switch off your phone, switch off your email notifications and really concentrate for those two hours. So I think part of it's about optimum working conditions and part of it's about being really clear about what your priorities are and if the thing that you're doing isn't going to help you get 
towards that priority, then I would question why you were doing it in the first place. <laughs> um, and then the the rest of it, the rest of the condition stuff, literally is like you got your three year old running about screaming in the background when you right. when you're on work calls. Um, so I've got colleagues that the the way they handle it is they like invite the kid in to the call for for a minute, put the headset on, say hi to everyone. Right, that's that's you done your bit. Let leave mommy to get on now, and then the kids away, and um, they get them involved just oh. for a little s- snippet, and explain to them what's going on, and then explain to them why it's important to give them a bit of space. So I think working from home, it's about chunking it up trying to create some sh- small parts of small parts of your optimum conditions and you know it's also there's also a bit about getting out and mixing up your routine like I've been working from home since March yeah. and I've had to mix up my treat my health and fitness routine and even some of the the meals and things that I cook because my day-to-day life there's not a lot of variation Hmm. and I I was finding myself kind of getting a little bit bored Hmm. and it's difficult when you're in lockdown you can't see you can't be social or you can't see your friends or family in person so um, a little bit of variation you can bring that in through other ways um, to kind of to keep the creep of boredom I I guess at, at arm's length for a little bit longer yeah, great advice. Thanks for sharing that. I, I want to take a minute too. We've got just a few minutes left and talk to me about, I mean, business stress is so high right now and, and talk to me about turning business stress and firefighting into into more calm, profitable growth. So my, uh, my kind of philosophy in life is life is far too short for all that stress, um, firefighting and emotional draining working eight hours a week it's it's life's too short to do that all the time Hmm. so my view in life is the things that you do a lot that you it is essentially a process is if you can systematize that if you can simplify it make it really efficient um mean make it to the get it to the point that either you delegate it automate it or if you have to do it it at least have a checklist or a little guide that you can follow that means you don't need to think about it anymore and it means the things that are most important to you you can push your in your energies and time and money into it so a really good example when I'm doing podcast interviews, I have a checklist that I run that's pre-interview, tick, tick, tick. Um, I have one for when I'm doing the interview and I have one for doing after. And because I have that checklist, it allows me to concentrate. I can be prepared before it. Um, I feel confident. I feel ready. I can give the most that I possibly can to you and your listeners. And I don't need to worry because the checklist is sorted out, all the detail things that I don't need to think about. Um, And it means I can throw all my time and energy into being the best possible guest and providing the most value because that's the most important thing in this moment for me and for you and your listeners. So I'm big on you've only got a little, you know, a set amount of time and energy and money in your life. Um, Systematize and get rid of the stuff that you don't need to do or can can be made easier. And the the time that you've got less left, use that fully to bring more value and be more creative and solve the problems that you're really good at because you've got more time and energy and money to put them put put that to good use because you've you've got rid of everything else. So that that's kind of a really short summary yeah. of why I think it's important. And it, it's not difficult. It's just about taking the time to 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 do it or find someone that can help you do that. Yeah. Jenny, thank you for that advice. Uh, 
yeah, your your website strivechange.org. Is there any other uh, site or or uh, thing that you would like to share as well? Um, no, everything's on strivechange.org. Um, or if your listeners are on LinkedIn, um, I know we connected earlier this week. So um, if anybody wants to connect on there um, as an alternative, then happy to happy to chat. I want to encourage everybody to check out that website, strivechange.org, connect with Jenny on LinkedIn. She helps entrepreneurs and business leaders to lead their teams through crisis and change. She just got to share a few examples and tips today. Uh, she helps them to stop the constant firefighting, the high stress and high emotion, running around like headless chickens, uh, feeling in their teams, business and personal lives. And she helps them instead gain calm and control. Doesn't that sound great for their teams, businesses and personal lives? by taking those core sporting principles she's learned and applying them to business. Jenny, thank you again for being our guest and we look forward to watching the next great things that you do. Thank you, Derek. Take care. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. 